And finally, new rule, if Halloween is too much for your fragile sensibilities and you're worried about seeing someone wearing something that's on the forbidden costume list... <laughs> Just stay the fuck home. <laughs> Every year we go through this bullshit. Lists of costumes you better not wear lest the night of irreverent dress-up spiral into something that resembles fun. <laughs> Here's an idea, clickbait websites. I won't tell you how to harvest and sell my personal data, and you don't tell me what I can wear on Halloween. <laughs> it's official. The woke left has lost Bill Maher. We're going to take a look at his latest and frankly brilliant critique of cancel culture as well as his scorching condemnation of woke historical revisionism. And we're going to see how Bill Maher is hardly alone. The woke left really is tearing the liberal world apart. This past weekend, Bill Maher slammed the uber-offended woke left in what he called Cancelvania, their ridiculous attempts at censoring Halloween costumes. He cited a list of banned costumes published on the ultra-left BuzzFeed site, or as he's calling it, Buzzkill, and proceeded to absolutely torch the woke left. You know, I find it so interesting. You would think that a Handmaid's Tale costume would be acceptable since it derives from a completely woke-approved show that condemns the patriarchy. No. Buzzkill says no Handmaid's Tale costume either because it hits a little too close to home right now. <laughs> okay, this is the life philosophy of zillennials. Things that are interesting might also contain something which could cause a moment of discomfort, so ban it all. It's not your fault, kids. Your parents ruined you by overprotecting you, and now you're these assholes. <laughs> and that is the craziest part of all this. Being irreverent, unclenched, and playful should be the province of the young, but it's not. Boomers are supposed to be the get-off-my-lawn crowd, but when someone in a problematic costume shows up at your door, it's literally Gen Z telling them to get off my lawn. <laughs> Except it's not even your lawn because you live at your parents' house. <laughs> so, I thought... What better costume to wear this year than the most ridiculous one I could think of? You. This year, I'm going as an uber-woke, overly anxious, perpetually offended 20-something. Would you like to see what I have for this costume? Okay. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. Okay. First of all, I have my Fuck the Patriarchy t-shirt. Oh, yes. And then I have a check from the Patriarchy to pay my car insurance. <laughs> Okay, I've got my, uh, my nose ring. My, I know, uh, my vape pen. I've got my cloth surgical mask. <laughs> my surgical mask, my N95 mask, and my face shield. <clears throat> then after I leave the house, I have my clonopin to take the edge off, <laughs> my Adderall to put it back on. <laughs> I have my participation trophy, my cat ear headphones to listen to sad music, the stick that goes up my ash, <laughs> and the leash for my support animal. And just in case anyone still doesn't get what I'm all about, I have a wet blanket. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was good. I was. I gotta say, that's when Bill Maher shines. When he takes on the insane woke left, he absolutely shines. I mean, it may be because of my partisan affinities for sure, but I think that when Maher beats up on Trump and MAGA Republicans, he just comes across as overly indignant and resentful. He's just not funny. He comes across as bitter and spiteful, like the late night clowns Jimmy Kimmel or Stephen Colbert. 
And his audience, which is overwhelmingly liberal, his audience loves it when Mar slams the woke. So I think he's really found his shtick here. Now, of course, this isn't the first time Mar has done this. He's a very serious and insightful critic of the woke left, particularly their take on history. New rule, you can get creative with a novel, a TV show, or a movie, but history books, that's not supposed to be fan fiction. How we teach our kids history has become a big controversy these days, with liberals accusing conservatives of wanting to whitewash the past, and sometimes that's true. Sometimes they do. But plenty of liberals also want to abuse history to control the present. And last month, a scholar named James Sweet caught hell for calling them out for doing just that. He criticized the phenomenon known as presentism, which means judging everyone in the past by the standards of the present. It's the belief that people who lived 100 or 500 or 1,000 years ago really should have known better. And the capacity for cruelty is a human thing, not a white thing. That's the truth, even though it doesn't jibe with the current narrative. But in today's world, when truth conflicts with narrative, it's the truth that has to apologize. Being woke is like a magic moral time machine where you judge everybody against what you imagine you would have done in 1066, and you always win. Portland Public Schools has a plan now to teach kids that the idea of gender being mainly binary was brought here by white colonizers. The curriculum guide says, when the United States was colonized by white settlers, their views around gender were forced upon the people already living here. <gasps> Not even Star Trek would try that story. <laughs> <clears throat> where they discover a planet and give them separate bathrooms. <laughs> it's like they finally discovered a unified theory of wokeness, incorporating all their ideas about race, gay, gender, and colonizers, like the New World was a great big diverse dance club and the pilgrims were the bridge and tunnel crowd who came in and ruined everything. <laughs> There's a play called I, Joan, currently being presented in London, written by Charlie Josephine, who identifies as non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. And it portrays Joan of Arc as, surprise, non-binary with they, them pronouns. <laughs> Which, if you think about it, makes even less sense because Joan, being French, spoke a language where every noun is masculine or feminine. Joan says in the play, I'm not a girl. I don't fit that word, as if she's a character on Euphoria. Now, that was brilliant. I mean, seriously, that was really brilliant. And his mention about Joan of Arc being French and speaking a language that's actually grammatically framed in gender binaries is not just a clever observation. It's actually precisely why the French government has banned woke gender neutral language from coming anywhere near their shores. They don't want anything to do with American wokeness. They find any and all attempts at degenderizing language as absolutely offensive to their culture. I think Bill Maher is being even more insightful here than he realized. But the key to all of this is that wokeness is literally tearing the left apart. The more woke the establishment left gets, both at the head of the Democratic Party, as well as the media and entertainment industries, the more woke they get, the more the political left ends up shattering. Joe Rogan is recognizing this. Wait until you hear what he had to say about the red wave that's coming up next week. But first, for you patriot business owners out there, you got to meet my good friend Josh Siglowski, co-founder of ERC Specialists. He has an amazing payroll protection company exclusively dedicated to understanding and maximizing what's called the CARES Act Employee Retention Credit. If you're a small business owner looking to get up to $26,000 per employee back from Bumbling Biden, click on that link in the description below to see if you qualify today. It's an absolutely amazing opportunity. There's a lot of people that are afraid of the reprisal. They're afraid of getting attacked and they'll s silently when they're amongst friends going, what the f is going on? Like, what is going on? Yeah. And those people, that's going to be responsible for the red wave. I think the red wave that's coming is going to be like the elevator doors opening up on The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. I think people are just like, what the f***? 
are you saying? You're, they're making Republicans. I don't know how they're doing it. It's. I had a family member who is an, who's a boomer and a diehard liberal, and they told me when I was home this summer that they would vote for DeSantis. And I'm like, how did you lose this person? Yeah. How did you lose this person? This is a this is a like go to the ballot and vote blue no matter what, and you've lost even. The, the boomers. You've lost a lot of them that aren't talking about it. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah, that's Joe Rogan. That's Joe Rogan with uh, comedian and podcaster Bridget Fetessy, who's also a disaffected leftist who's abandoned the Democrats of late. Again, what you're hearing here is all from one staunch leftist. Marr, Rogan, Fetessy. We can add Elon Musk to the list. Piers Morgan. All once avowed leftists. And they've all abandoned the woke. To the extent that the left is defined by wokeness, they want nothing to do with it. And we've got data now showing that they're merely representative of a mass sentiment on the left. This is coming from data compiled by University of London scholar Eric Kaufman, where he draws from a number of surveys that all show the exact same thing. When you ask Democrats that they support some woke agenda, right? Do you support CRT being taught in our schools or transgender athletes competing in women's sports, whatever it happens to be, the answers generally split down the middle. About 50% will say, yes, I'm all for it. But another 50% will say no. For example, we know precisely where Amar would be. He would say, absolutely not. While I'm sure one of his leftist panelists would say yes, right? But when you ask Republicans the same questions, do you support such and such issue or woke issue or agenda? What's the Republicans answer? What? It's not just a no, it's a resounding hell no. So wokeness, what it's doing is it's splitting the left and it's uniting the right. In other words, the right is far more likely to vote against wokeness than the left is to vote for it. That's why wokeness is splitting the Democrats and galvanizing and uniting Republicans, which Bill Maher, again, it needs to be underscored, Bill Maher is a liberal. He's not a Republican by any stretch of the imagination, but even he has had it with the woke left. And as this data suggests, Bill Maher is not alone. We are indeed seeing the liberal world splitting apart just in time for the midterms. <laughs> As always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You will definitely want to check out my latest video on a bombshell that just dropped that spells doom for the Democrats in the midterms. You're not going to want to miss it. So make sure to click on that link and I will see you over there. God bless.